Hi everyone, this is Raquel from Scrap Cozy. Today I have a very special project because I'm releasing new stamp sets and stencils with Paper Artsy. This is a project, is a binder, and I'll use it to keep all my stamps and stencils together. Here I'm using two stamp sets and two stencils from the two first collections, ESC04 and ESC05, or as I call them, Vintage Roses and Found in the Forest. This is the inside part, and as you can see, it has three rings, four bindings, and a pocket. In the pocket I can fit my six stencils, and in the rings I can actually poke holes in the index sheet of each stamp set, and I can hold my six stamp sets together. I created the base from scratch, there is another video so you can watch how I did it. Here I'm just removing the three rings and the pocket because I'm going to decorate everything. I will select three stamps from the stamp set, put them in L shape and I will create that background. I'll use VersaFine ink to stamp my images. Since this is craft paper, the surface is not completely flat, so I'm making sure that I press very thoroughly my stamped image before I lift my stamps. To create a repeated background and so it matches, what I will be doing is stamping my next image in diagonal. So you see that the nerve of the leaf goes up and I'm just making sure that it matches with the next leaf. I'm speeding up the process so you can see how I stamp around the original image and then everything else just fits in its place. It takes a while to cover everything, but we are almost done. Just a few more stamping and ready to move on to the next step, which is painting the images. For that, I will be using infusions with satin glaze. Just mix a little bit of satin glaze with infusions very thoroughly and start painting. I just have a piece of paper with me so I can check the color before I actually move on to the real project. I'm starting with the acorns and I'm starting with rusty car. For the bottom part of the acorn, I'm using Rocky Road, which is a darker brown. And then I use Golden Sands for the maple seeds. If you notice, I'm mixing the previous brown with the next one, because I really don't mind to use the exact same color. I just want a different tone of brown. Now for the leaves, I'll move on to Olive Tree. This one took me much longer, because the surface to paint is longer, but it's okay. At the end, it looks everything very nice. Once all painted and dry, I'll move on to the next step, which is aging the edges and the entire surface. And I will be using some Distress Ink, Vintage Photo. I'm applying it with a sponge dauber, focusing more on the edges, but going thoroughly through everywhere. Once I finish with the inside, I'll move on to the outside. And as you'll see, since I created these covers from scratch, the paper that I sticked onto the grey board was not entirely flat, so it has some texture. And while applying the ink, you reveal it. So it looks very nice and very vintagey. Now that this is done, I will create my scene. I will stamp my mushrooms there, like if they were in a line, which is my soil. I will also stamp the leaves on the top and on the side. I'm basically framing what will be my title. I'm putting the snail on the bottom part, also in the same imaginary line, and I'm stamping three times that leaf. For the spine, I've selected those two stamps and I'm repeating them top to bottom. And now that everything is stamped, we are going to color the images again. Same technique, satin glaze with infusions. I'm starting with rustic art. And I will paint the three leaves and some other details like the branches and the acorns. With some rocky road again, I will paint more darker details. If you add less infusions and more satin glaze, then you'll get a softer version of brown. Or if you want a darker brown, then just add more infusions. Now I'm using golden sands again for the maple seeds. And I'll swap to olive tree for the leaves. 
Now I'm going to create my title. I've been stenciled, found in the wild forest with crunch paste and I've put some infusions and spritz water on it. I'm heat setting it with the heat tool to make sure that I keep all the color that I can. And then I'm also getting some of the color lifted from the craft sheet to get more drops and more interesting background. I'm adding more infusions and more water and I will keep on adding more details here and there. With a little bit of infusions and water and a brush, I'm just marking some vertical and horizontal lines to get kind of like a linen effect. I'll dry everything and add more splashes. I'm using a brush that has like plastic hair, <laughs> so it really drops big droplets. So I'm adding some infusions and water and making sure that I pick it to create lots of detail there. And now I'm using my sanding block to actually remove some of the color from the letters. So I retrieve a little bit of the white that the grunge paste has. Once finished, I'll trim my piece of title to the size that I want. And then I'll add some vintage photo distress ink to the edges and to the front so I can get a more distressed and vintage look. And to accentuate more the edges, I'm using Ground Espresso, just on the edges. Now I'm testing my title in place and I believe it needs a margin. So I'll go and pick a piece of white cardstock and trim it a little bit bigger than the actual title. So I'll frame it. And to that frame I will apply some vintage photo distress ink on the edges so it has this worn and distressed look and it matches everything. I decided to add a bit more detail so I stitched the edges and now I'm making sure that they are not white so I'm putting some vintage photo distress ink. Now that I'm happy I'm going to apply some metallic touches. I'm putting some brats by poking a hole on each corner Three of them will be single and one of them will have a mushroom hanging from it. I'm using my Tim Holtz scissors to cut the excess. Don't use regular scissors or you'll break them. And once ready, I will stick everything in place with the tape. There I realized that my line is not there, so I prefer to paint it. I'm using some friction paint, which is brown, and then I'm applying some forest moss distress ink with a sponge tower and some vintage photo. Now I will apply some corners there, metallic ones, with hot glue adhesive. This is very fast and very secure. Now I'm going to attach the title with the ATG gun and the front is done. Now I will work on the back with the other stencil and the other stamp set. I'm using grunge paste through the stencil to apply my quote, which is the rose is the queen of the garden. I'm heat setting it with the heat tool so I can move on to the next step, which is a stamping. I'm selecting the biggest stamp with the roses and I'm stamping it three times. Again, I'm creating like a frame and I'm filling the gaps with that lettering. I'm stamping my three butterflies, well there are two butterflies and a moth, <laughs> in line, from bigger to smaller. And I will apply a little bit more of lettering by masking what I don't want it. Now it's time for coloring. I've selected Raspberry and Sunset Beach. I'm starting with Sunset Beach and in the same way that I did before, I'm applying satin glaze and infusions by way of my translucent paint. I'm focusing on the roses first and I'm painting all the details and all the petals that I can find. I have my stamp set on my side so I can actually check what is a petal and what it's not. Now I'm mixing some olive tree with satin glaze and I will paint the leaves. And as you can see, I have my stamp set on the side in the same position as my stamp image so I can check what is actually a leaf and what it's not. It is a bit tricky with this background 
to actually have the detail and understand what is actually a leaf or not. So that helps a lot to have it on the side. Now with some rustic art, I'm just painting the butterflies. And by adding a little bit of rocky road, I'll paint the moth. And now I mix everything together to paint the biggest one. And since the letters are too white, I'm applying some vintage photo distress ink on top of them to make them a, a bit more brown. And I'm applying more vintage photo all around. So this is the cover finished. Now I'm doing the pocket. The template for the pocket is available on my blog, so you can see and get the measurements that you need. I'm going to apply some gold fresco paint and satin glaze, as well as infusions, to create like a wood panel effect. I'm using a brown friction ball paint to actually paint the lines, so you will see that they disappear while I apply the paint. It's just to have a guideline, and if it remains it's not bad, because then it would be like if they were wood panels. So I'm starting with olive tree and I'm applying it in vertical strokes. And now I'm adding rusty car to give it a bit of a more orangey color. For the rest, once everything is dry, I will apply just gold because I don't want anything white to be seen. I also need to paint that part on the back that will be seen once the pocket is assembled. If you have the craft sheet as bad as this one, you just need to clean it with a ruler, that part that it's already dry, and it's very easy to actually remove it. Now I'm going to decorate the pocket by stamping some images. I'm putting the mushroom and the snail, and since I'm stamping in a non-porous surface, I need to heat set it before I actually apply color to make sure that the image doesn't smear. And I will use the same technique as before, satin glaze with infusions. Once everything is dry, I will put some double side tape so I can attach the lace and I will actually sew that button. I'm not going to make any knots, I'm just going to pass the thread through and then stick it to the back with a little bit of cell tape. To the part where I'm putting the bu button, I didn't apply any glue, so it's easier for me to pass the needle through. Now I'm going to assemble the pocket by using the ATG gun. Just putting all the glue that I need in all the pieces, and then I'll fold it to create the pocket. Now it's time to put it in place. I'll trim the excess of lace and then with a cut glue gun I'm going to fix it. This is a very easy way and very secure way to actually put this. It will not move at all once dry and it dries pretty quickly. So this is done. And now I'm going to create my own template to actually bind all my stamps. So I'm marking a line where the holes are and then a vertical line. So then I effectively have crosses and then I will mark those holes and poke them. And this is my base template. And I'm going to try that it actually works, okay? So I'm putting the rings back and putting my template through and closing the rings. And it seems it works. So now it's ready to be used as a template. So I'm getting my index sheet along with its own plastic and I'm temporarily attaching it with some washi tape and then I'll poke the three holes. Once done, all I have to do is put my stamps back, put everything back into the pocket 
and it's ready to be bind. So this is the finished project, let's have a look at it. Different details and here you can see how the stencils fit in place. It actually fits six of them, which are the ones now available as a scrap cozy. And here are the first three collections of stamps, the forever release. And now we have the June release, the roses, the forest, and a Halloween one. And in this way, I can keep all my stamps and stencils at hand in a single place. I hope you like it. So this is the project for today, featuring two of my new stamp sets and stencils that we have released in June with Paper Artsy. I hope you like it and if you did, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, give me a thumbs up or leave me any comment. You can find the stencils and stamps available at my Etsy shop. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Bye!